This is the Xiaomi Mi 5X. It is a glimpse into the world of flagship high-end smartphones at a fraction of the price. With that being said, let's get right into the video. Sliding in at just under $300, the Xiaomi Mi 5X is trying to compete in the upper mid-range smartphone market. And you'll notice almost seconds after taking it out of the box that it has the design, the build quality, and the visual appeal to give it a good head start on this mission. It is a slim, trim, and compact smartphone, packing a lot of tech into a package that is as svelte as it is powerful. Now, one important thing to note here is that this phone has borrowed inspiration from the more high-end smartphones in terms of design. Although it's got a budget price tag, it's more reminiscent of phones like the OnePlus 5, for example, in terms of the way it's finished, which is nothing but a compliment. Even though it's not technically that much more expensive, its design is a vast departure and an improvement from the Redmi line of smartphones. If it's comfortably in the hand, it's evenly weighted. My only complaint here would be that it damages a little bit too easily. If you accidentally rub a zip or a hard object or a key against it, you will probably leave a permanent mark. So what you need to know about this display is that first of all, it has a pretty standard 5.5 inch 1080p display, which gives it a good level of sharpness, but also that it uses a slightly different display technology to the more high-end phones that it's trying to imitate. And what this gives us is a fairly natural color palette, but a contrast that really isn't that great. Also a brightness of 450 nits, which means in broad daylight, you're gonna have a little bit of trouble reading the screen. The bezels on the top and the bottom are pretty chunky, but at least the ones on the sides have been trimmed down. Now, another aspect of the phone that's a little bit disappointing is the speakers. They reach a reasonable volume that have this slightly echoey feel to them. They lack clarity, which is more or less a basic requirement for a phone speaker. Bit of a shame. In contrast, the fingerprint scanner on the back is up there with the very best. It is not only fast, makes few mistakes, but is also easy to feel for. Now, apart from the design, the other main departure of this phone from the Redmi Note line of smartphones would be that 12 megapixel dual camera. And this is a detailed camera that captures lots of color and has a fast shutter time, so even when you turn down that brightness, even when you go indoors, you preserve quite a bit of the detail. And one thing worth noting is that the maximum aperture of the rear cameras without this fancy bokeh mode is f2.2. So without using the portrait mode, you don't really get too much bokeh on these shots. Having said that, when we switch over to portrait mode, the bokeh is incredible. Sometimes it does fail, just like with any other smartphone, and it does take longer to take your photos, so you do have to hold the camera steady, but when it works, it works really, really well. I would say the best way of summarizing this camera is that it gives you a glimpse into what the high-end smartphones can do. It gives you the ability to take the similar kind of photos you can take with $600 flagships, but it's just a little bit less consistent. The front camera isn't bad, isn't too great either, but the video here is really rather impressive. This is 4K, 30 frames per second footage, and it comes out crisp, clear, and fairly well stabilized. What is a bit of a shame here is that internally, the Mi 5X is more or less identical to the Xiaomi Redmi Note 4X, which is undoubtedly a phone intended for more budget-oriented consumers. Having said that, it's not a slow phone. With the Snapdragon 625 and four gigs of RAM, we're getting about 63,000 on Antutu, which gives us more than enough power to essentially run the operating system very smoothly, to multitask between a lot of different demanding applications and still have RAM to spare, and also to game on almost anything you want to. This can play all your standard 3D, 2D, 2.5D games, and you really shouldn't have too much of a problem. The only times you might start to notice the lack of power is when playing the most demanding games. If you're playing your modern combats or your Novas, you might start to notice a dropped frame every now and again. Or when you're launching or loading an application, things do happen at a noticeably slower pace compared to phones with the Snapdragon 835, for example. Now, in terms of software, the phone I've got here is the Chinese version, so it's still got MIUI 8, so I can't bring you my full impressions of the new software MIUI 9, which the international one should be shipping with. Having said that, MIUI does feel right at home on this device. It runs well, it's slick, it's smooth, and as customizable as ever. If you don't like the standard launcher, you can always switch over to something like Nova Launcher like I've done here. The only thing worth bearing in mind is if you are gonna buy the Chinese version, you are gonna have to find a way to sideload the Play Store, which can be a bit of a pain. Unfortunately, the slim body of this smartphone does come at a slight cost in battery life. Compared to the Redmi Note line of phones, this one only has 3,080 mAh, which is noticeably smaller. Having said that, it still translates into a perfectly reasonable level of battery life. Flicking between YouTube, installing applications, and gaming, you can still get a full day's use out of this guy. But it's worth bearing in mind that further down the line, when you've used the phone for a bit, that same battery life may not continue to hold. It's also worth noting that as well as the 32 or 64 gigabytes of internal storage, this is one of the only Mi smartphones to support a micro SD card slot, which is a huge bonus. So guys, that is the Xiaomi Mi 5X. 
Whilst it looks and feels every bit like a premium flagship, there are times when you're using it where you'll start to realise why it isn't. Having said that, even amidst its shortcomings, at its very best, there are times using this phone that you'll feel like it costs twice as much as it does, and that is a feat not to be underestimated. I really hope you enjoyed the video, I'm Mr Who's the Boss, and I'm signing out.